To all those people watching, I'd like to remind everyone that this video is not made for kids. It's for older fans and adults. Enjoy the fucking video! The island of Sodor was flourishing. In addition to tourists, many people were making their homes in the developing communities. To meet demand, the Fat Controller added more coaches to the Express. The big engines were pleased. All except James. One morning, James arrived at the big station to collect a slow goods train. He eyed the waiting express at the next platform. It seemed to stretch on for miles. A horn interrupted his thoughts as Boko rolled alongside. Morning James! Come to wish me good luck, have you? Looks like you'll need it, replied James. Don't the extra coaches give you trouble? I was worried they would, especially on the hill. Driver knows better though. He gives me plenty of speed beforehand and we coached along. James glanced at the coaches again. A feeling of dread washed over him. Is everything all right? inquired Boko. Uh, oh yes, James replied hastily. But ride as rain. Must be off. These trucks won't pull themselves, you know. Best of luck, Boko. James hurried away. Boko was stunned. Something's not right, he thought. Something wasn't right. For as cocky as James could be, he wasn't blind to his own limits. On level ground, he could pull long trains with ease. The gradients, however, proved challenging, and he knew they would now be harder than ever. It soon came time for James's first run with the new express. He simmered silently at the platform, thinking of nothing but the hill. Before he knew it, the guard's whistle blew. Come along, come along, he puffed determinedly to the coaches. Give it all you got, James, hooted Boko from a nearby siding. Out on the main line, the train picked up speed. James began to feel better. But all too soon, Edward's station loomed in the distance. I can do it, I can do it, he puffed to himself. James tore through the station and began the ascent of Gordon's Hill. It didn't take long to feel the drag of the heavy coaches. And soon he slowed to a crawl. I must do it, I must do it, he strained. Steady on, James, cautioned the driver. We can call for a banker if need be. I'll get over this hill if it's the last thing I do, gritted James. It just might be, with how he's carrying on, the fireman muttered grimly. Slowly but surely, James and the coaches crested the top of the hill. He was relieved, but exhausted, and struggled to get the train back up to speed. When he finally hissed into the last station, he was ten minutes late, and the passengers were orny.
When he returned to the shed, his driver spoke to him. I think the express proved too much for us today, he sighed. Pa! snorted James. We made it over the hill, didn't we? Only just, replied the driver sternly. You'll damage us up at this rate. And if the passengers keep complaining like they did today, we won't be heading up much longer. I can pull it just as well as the others, James retorted defiantly. And I'll be on time tomorrow. Mark my words. The driver admitted defeat as James shut his eyes. Unknown to either of them, Boko had heard everything. The next day, James was coasting along the line again. The coaches hummed happily, but he paid no mind to them. Won't be late, won't be late, he grunted. Once again, Edward's station appeared, and the signal showed lying clear. Give it all you've got, old boy, encouraged the driver, and he opened the regulator. James gathered speed and charged at the hill, but his efforts were for naught. Once more, the coaches dragged him to a near standstill. His wheels spun, but he couldn't get a proper grip. Then, bang! James was enveloped in a cloud of steam. His driver and fireman staggered out of the cab, coughing hoarsely. That's torn it. We'll need help now. Help soon arrived, in the form of Boko. Are you all right? He asked, concerned. James didn't answer. He just looked sadly at his buffers. Boko hastily coupled up and pulled the train all the way to the last station. Despite his best efforts to make up time, the express still arrived late. The passengers were furious and complained bitterly to the station master. I have places to be, grumbled one man. I thought this was an express. That scrawny engine isn't getting us anywhere fast, added a woman. If that clapped out thing can't get a shit on time, finished an elderly man, pointing at James. I shan't ride on this railway any longer. The waiting mainland diesel snickered. But a glare from Boko silenced him, and he scuttled away once the passengers were on board. Ignore them, Boko smiled. I oh, know you did your best today. Yes, sighed James, but it seems my best wasn't good enough. The passengers' words echoed in his smoke box. For the first time, James truly felt clapped out. James wasn't the same when he returned from the works. He trudged along with the slow trains, hardly saying anything to anyone. When the day was done, he retired to the shed and fall asleep without a word. I knew the express was important to him, Berker remarked to Edward, but not to this extent. Even the prospect of pulling Dowager Hatch special excursion didn't shake him from his stupor. Edward was worried, so he spoke to Sir Topham Hatt. A few days later, James found himself working at Edward Station. He shunted in the yard and took Boko's branch line trains while the diesel pulled the express. Unfortunately, it didn't have the effect Edward had hoped for. Disgraceful, James grunted. Imagine pulling the express one week and being confined to a branch line the next. Come now, James, smiled Edward. I'm certainly glad you're here. And besides, it's a nice change of pace. A fall from grace, if you ask me, grumbled James, and he bumped some trucks hard. Now, for all his kindness, Edward had a tendency to be impatient. This was especially true when it came to his own trains. He hated being late. He wasn't as fast as the other engines, and 
didn't like having to make up for lost time. Though he tried to be understanding, Edward's patience was wearing thin. James refused to bank trains up Gordon's Hill and was sluggish with shunting. Time and again, Edward was left picking up the slack. What time do you call this? Fussed Daisy as Edward bustled into the junction. I'm sorry, panted Edward. I, as I'm now late, I've no time for excuses, glared Daisy. But I suggest you not make this a habit, my dear. The fat controller will like it. He didn't, and after more delayed trains, he told Edward as such. Not wanting to make James feel worse, he took the blame himself. I'm sorry, sir, Edward sighed. It won't happen again. When Edward returned and found his yard in disarray, he had a sinking feeling it would happen again. He frowned when he saw James sulking about. We do have a timetable, you know. Pa, said James. It's just a branch line. Not like there's an express to keep to time. That's quite enough, interrupted Edward. There's more to life than the express. You're not even trying to keep things in order. I expect trains on my branch to be timely. If you can't do that, go back to soaking in the shed. Before James could reply, Henry arrived at the express and whistled for a banker. Don't worry, said Edward sharply. I'll get it. Come on, come on, he huffed hastily, pushing the train up the hill. Settle down, settle down, grumbled Henry. Not so fast, not so fast, groaned the coaches. At last, Henry was over the hill. And Edward hurried back to the station. Meanwhile, the trucks had noticed the look of guilt on James's face. It's been lonely knowing you all, said one. But I'll be bound for the scrapyard if this sort of thing keeps pushing me around. Thanks a lot, Chop Shed Edward, commented a second one. Couldn't count it as an express engine, laughed another. And he's not much of a shunter either. That's enough, snapped James. With a hard bump, the trucks rolled out of the siding and onto the main line. At that moment, Edward appeared. He didn't see the signal or the trucks fouling the line. With a crash, Edward collided with the trucks. His tender bounce jolted and came to an awkward rest on the sleepers. Oh dear, he winced. Oh dear, echoed James shamefully. Soon Donald arrived with the breakdown train. And Sir Topham Hatt. I am disappointed, James, he scolded. Edward asked me to send you here to take your mind off your mishap. This is not a kind of way to thank him. I expect you'll pull your weight while Edward is inspected. Is that clear? James gulped. The message was crystal clear. Thankfully, Edward wasn't hurt, and he and the trucks were soon back on the rails. James worked the hardest he had all week tidying the yard and banking trains while Edward was looked over. I'm sorry, Edward, he said in the shed that night. I've been nothing but a nuisance since I arrived. Well, replied Edward. That accident could have been avoided had I not been so hasty. I'm sorry for being short. I know these changes have been hard for you. Well, added James sadly, if I can't handle simple shunting or branch line trains, maybe I don't deserve the express. Tomorrow seems like a perfect chance for a fresh start, smiled Edward. There is a passenger train to take, 
and my coaches will be thrilled to be pulled by a mainline engine. For the first time in days, James smiled. A fresh start was just what he needed. While James worked on Edward's line, he often saw Trevor the traction engine. Each time he passed the orchard, he whistled gaily. Trevor smiled but never whistled back, as it didn't seem to be in steam. This gave James cause for concern. One morning, he stopped close to the orchard to collect apples. Another busy day for you, Trevor? <laughs> That's wishful thinking on your part. Trevor chuckled dryly. I certainly prefer to be busy. Trevor gave a heavy sigh. I do envy you, James. Me? An engine who can't even pull an express properly anymore? Asked James, bewildered. Pass, snorted Trevor. Who needs an express? You can go anywhere and do anything. I used to go to farms, quarries, towns. Seems I'm only needed here nowadays. It's a shame. I do like to explore. Why, I'll bet you've seen the whole of the island by now. Actually, James faltered, I haven't. Mainline work only takes you from one end to the other. I've not been on some branch lines for years, if ever. Why not? asked Trevor. Some engines, James replied pointedly, think less of branch lines. I suppose that rubbed off on me. Ah, said Trevor, perhaps the disdain is born of jealousy. Those heavier engines never get to travel these rails, but you do. Just then thunder echoed in the distance. With this weather, the only travelling I'll be doing is to my shed, chuckled James as he puffed off. You stay put too, Trevor. That night the wind howled and the rain beat down on the shed roof. James's sleep was uneasy, but not because of the storm, he was thinking about Trevor. By morning the storm had passed. James and Edward were being readied for their first trains when they saw the station master pacing the yard. For pity's sake, where's a crane when you need one? Something wrong, sir? asked Edward. Afraid so. That wind last night brought down trees along the drain. Bill and Ben are trapped at the clay pits. We need to clear the line, but the breakdown cranes are all in use. We don't need a crane, sir, beamed James. We need Trevor. I can fetch him if Edward takes my passengers. The necessary arrangements were made. And soon, James and Trevor were steaming down the branch line. What fun this'll be, chortled Trevor. James had never been past the harbour before, and was amazed when he saw the drain. Drowned trees blocked the way, and rainwater pulled around the line. A little water won't stop me, laughed Trevor, and he set to work removing the trees. When the line was clear and deemed safe, James carried on to the clay pits. While Trevor sawed the trees, he helped Bill and Ben take their china clay to the harbour. I say, Ben, smirked Bill. Red is a nice change for all these blue engines we see. Still think our colour is better though, grinned Ben. At last the work was done. James set off with a train of china clay, timber and a traction engine. Well Trevor, he asked when they reached the orchard, how did you fancy exploring today? 
Oh, it's just what I needed, Trevor yawned happily, and I hope it's what you needed too. With that, Trevor fell contentedly to sleep, while James continued on to the junction. Yes, Trevor, he smiled, exactly what I needed. One day, James took a goods train to the other railway. He was thrilled to be back on the main line, and thanks to Edward's influence, he kept the trucks in order. They hardly muttered a word the whole journey. He arrived on time and was looking forward to a rest before going home, but his fireman was worried. You need more coal, he grumbled. But there's not a bunker in sight. We'll have to ask around. There must be coal somewhere, added the driver. I doubt we'll get much assistance, muttered James. As he moved through the yard, Diesels eyed him menacingly. Some snickered, others snarled like territorial dogs. James wasn't frightened but he knew he had to swallow his pride and ask for help. Excuse me, he called to a big blue diesel. Where might I find some coal? The diesel glanced at him. So, daughter Jen, he asked unenthusiastically. Yes, replied James. My name is Claptrap, the diesel suddenly chortled. I beg your pardon? Oh yes, I know you, cackled the diesel. Claptrap, the pitiful thing that broke down with the express. Oh, look, they even gave you a little good strain to make you feel useful. How touching. James was speechless. Run along back to your island of delusion. Though I feel the scrapyard will be more fitting. That's enough out of you, a shunter scuttled over. Your coach is awaiting. Get fuel to be off with you. The big diesel harumphed. At least a modern engine will be part of the express. I'll go show you control of what he's missing. As he roared off, the shunter spoke. Ignore him. A bother to all of us. No bunkers or shoots here. With no use for them, you see. But there's coal trucks at the back of the yard that you're welcome to. James whistled thank you and set off, brooding over the other diesel's words. The big diesel was waiting for his driver to return. He was still thinking about James, and that's when he noticed the coal trucks. <laughs> Let the old Clutter get home now, he chuckled. When his driver returned, the diesel told him they were to bring the trucks to the station. The driver, unsuspecting, backed him down the siding. The diesel tried to slow down to couple to the trucks, but couldn't. Hey, hey, what's this? He yelped. The driver tried and tried, but the brakes wouldn't work. Suddenly... CRASH! At that moment, James appeared. As the dust settled, he couldn't help but laugh. The trunk squashed against the buffers were now in pieces. The diesel sat crooked with lumps of coal piled around him. Well, well, remarked James. What have you got yourself into, Lumpy? Th th that's not my name! The diesel spluttered angrily. It is now, grunted the shunter, who had been alerted by the commotion. Serves you right for being horrid. Lumpy huffed and looked sulkily away. Couldn't have picked a better time for your tantrums, eh? Scolded the shunter. Your express to Sodor is due, and here you are, dirty and derailed. 
I'll take it, James offered. You, scoffed Lumpy. I'd like to see you try. I will try, James snapped back, which is more than I could say for you. Soon, everything was arranged. After James's tender was filled, he hurriedly backed onto the coaches. When the whistle blew, he was off. Come on, come on, he puffed eagerly. We're coming, don't fuss, we're coming, don't fuss, answered the coaches. The train was soon coasting along the line. And minimally the coals of poor quality, black smoke poured from James's funnel. The coaches were heavy and he was beginning to feel puffed. Won't give up, won't give up, he snorted. Presently it grew harder for James to breathe. The fireman was concerned. Blasted coals belly burning. We might be in trouble. Won't be beat, won't be beat, James coughed determinedly. He summoned all the steam and strength he had. Passing engines were alarmed. They urged James on, but hurried away so as not to be showered with coal dust. At long last, a big station appeared in the distance. With one final effort, James pulled into the platform with a triumphant whistle. I've done it! I've done it! He cried. You certainly have. Walking towards him was the fat controller. I've heard all about your ordeal on the other railway. I'm very proud of you, James. Would you like to pull the express again? I know the extra coaches complicate matters, but no thank you, sir, James cut in. I don't need the express. The fat controller was stunned. I'm a mixed traffic engine. Coaches or trucks, what does it matter? I pull them all with ease. Go anywhere, do anything, that's me. The fat controller chuckled, glad that James was back to his old self. James is a much happier engine now. Sometimes he misses the thrill of the express, but venturing to new parts of the island makes up for it. Besides, the passengers on the local trains always remark how smart and smooth he is. James certainly couldn't complain about that. And what about Lumpy? You could say he's a different engine too. Much quieter and far less brash. His story had spread and he dreaded going to Sodor. I thought you were modern, remarked Gordon slyly. Fancy using coal, do you? How regressive. Lumpy grunted as he backed onto his train. Oh, look, James smirked. They give you a little good train so you can feel useful. How touching. The engines howled with laughter. Lumpy, feeling far from touched, rolled away. He never referred to James as Claptrap again. <laughs>